Today's day is uh, October 21st, 2019. Um, the name of the person being interviewed is, sir, what's your name? Joseph Costello. Okay, and what is the address here? Uh, the address here is 9804 South Military Trail. Okay, good. And uh, actually that's uh, your state representative, aren't you, sir? That's correct. Okay. And what, what is your district? Uh, district 90. Okay. And um, my name is Carlton Cartwright. I'm the Executive Director for the Children's Coalition Incorporated. And we are here today to interview Mr. Casella for the Veterans History Project for the Library of Congress. <coughs> uh, sir, what, what branch of the service did you serve in? United States Air Force. Okay. And um, what years was that? Yeah, uh, approximately 1972 to 1980. And where were you uh, just before you went into service? What were you doing prior to the military? I just had gotten out of a uh, two-year college, and uh, I was uh, drafted. Where was that? Where were you? In Worcester, Massachusetts. Okay. And uh, what were you doing at the time? I was just starting my career. I had graduated as an electrician. I was just starting my career as an electrician uh, when I got my draft notice. Okay. Okay. All right. Um... Why did you choose that branch of the service? Uh, I was told that, uh, that uh, well, at that particular time, the uh, Vietnam War was going on. And uh, with the draft notice, uh, they were going to take me in the U.S. Army. Uh, talking with friends and relatives and such, that uh, they uh, said I should probably opt for maybe the Air Force and uh, not uh, get swept up in the... Uh, in ground forces in Vietnam at the time. Okay. Okay. Um, where were you? Who were you living with? I was still at home, uh, living with my uh, parents. Uh, like I said, I just had gotten out of school. I had, uh, I was 20 years old at the time. Uh, never had traveled the world or such. So uh, that draft notice was a, a real wake-up call. Okay. <laughs> I bet it was. What rank were you when you separated? Uh, I was a sergeant, and, staff sergeant. Uh, where did you serve? Uh, mainly here in the, in the States, when I got drafted, uh, and then I went into the uh, Air Force, uh, as you know, the Vietnam War, about those particular uh, dates there, was just uh, starting to uh, neutralize and wind down. And that's when uh, President Nixon at the time uh, stopped sending troops over there. So uh, I obviously didn't have to go overseas. Right, okay. Um, what, why did you join? Well, to serve my country, I, I felt an obligation to serve at that time. Uh, I was, like I say, as a young guy, uh, you know, I was very patriotic. My uh, my dad had served in uh, World War II in the U.S. Navy, uh, and uh, it uh, it served it served a great purpose. Okay. Okay. Um, what? Um, so you went to where? Where was basic training? Uh, Lackland Air Force in San Antonio, Texas, the gateway to the Air Force. How long was it? How long uh, was basic training? Basic training at that time was somewhere in the uh, vicinity of uh, 18 weeks, I believe. Wow. Yep. It was, it was like four, four and a half months. That's correct. Wow. Well, tell me about it. Well, the... the <laughs> well, I was like six. It, well, yeah, no, it, it was that long, mm -hmm. and uh, the... Uh, it was pretty ironic in a sense that, uh, like I say, when I joined the Air Force, uh, they had made all kinds of promises to me, and uh, one of the promises was that uh, they had, uh, I was a golfer at the time, they had golf courses and such. They made it sound more like a country club setting than a boot camp right. for new recruits. So uh, obviously I went down there with the great intent of uh, enjoying myself. Uh, I quickly found out that wasn't the case, uh, and I found out quite clucky when I quickly when I get off the bus with uh, my suitcase and my golf clubs. Are you serious? I was serious. The heart attack, it didn't go well <laughs> from that point on. I was known as Arnie. <laughs> uh, as an uh, Arnold Palmer. As an Arnold Palmer and it made my uh, uh, 16, 18 weeks there much more difficult, I can assure you. I bet, I bet. And I never did see the golf course. No, nope, never, never. <laughs> okay, that's that's one for the books, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Okay, um, so for for four and a half months, tell me about your experience preparing yourself, um, um, developing your um, your military bearing. 
Well, I, I'll tell you, and, and, and this is why. Did that, did that, did that, did that combine tech school? Your AFSC? Yeah, it, it did. Uh, that was the whole intent of getting into the Air Force where I could pick my, uh, my uh, tech school and uh -huh. such. Uh, I had an electronic, electrical background. Uh, but what it does, uh, and I think that any time that you're into a uh, military or semi-military organization, uh -huh. it, it shows you structure, it shows you respect in, in how to give orders and take orders, and it's, it's, a, uh, it's a program that I would highly recommend that everybody, uh, you know, within drafting age should uh, pursue. Okay, okay. So what was basic like? What time did you have to get up in the morning? Oh, it was 5 o'clock in the morning. It was hurry up and wait type things, the chow hall to uh, classes and such. It was uh, very structured in a sense. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, you know, for not uh, for being a free spirit, when you first get in, uh, they, they kind of like uh, teach you the ways of, uh, you know, structure. <laughs> okay. Um, what what basic uh, what was your AFSC anyway? It was uh, I ended up going into a ground radio repair. Oh okay, all right, all right. And you did that at Lackland, or did you go to a tech school? No, Lackland. Uh, then they uh, after uh, the uh, the uh, basic training, we went on to uh, uh, Keesler Air Force Base in Mississippi, okay. down in Biloxi, Mississippi. Right. And uh, there I spent uh, almost a uh, year and a half. Oh really? Yeah, in tech school. It was one of the longer tech schools. Uh, that time. Right, yeah. Um, I was going to ask you, uh, so that was a year and a half, basic training was, was uh, four and a half months, four and months. then you went on to Keesler for another four year and, and a half, half training? Co correct. Wow. Uh, yeah. yeah, and uh, as Keesler, uh, we uh, had tech school, uh, I was in the, uh, the C shift, which was a, uh, from uh, like um, the midnight type shift, from uh, midnight to to uh, daybreak, uh, and uh, we had a march back and forth from the barracks to the tech school across the uh, flight lines and, and such, uh, and it was, uh, it was a great, great, great experience. Okay. You remember um, any of your instructors? Uh, not so much by name, only the classes themselves, but I do remember that uh, at the time they had a structure, and what they would uh, call them was the, uh, you earned different colored ropes to wear on your uniform. And depending on what color you wore, uh, gave you a uh, privilege to uh, either be in charge of the uh, dorm, the barracks, or uh, actually ended up being in charge of the squadron. So you could work your way up uh, uh, in rank in that way there. Okay. All right. By the time, um, I'm just curious, um, by the time you finish basic and your tech school, had you acquired any more stripes or any stripes at all? Uh, at the, no, as you get out of tech school, you come out as a, uh, a, uh, a buck private, you know, oh. one stripe. Okay. Uh, one striper, uh, that's what you earn right. after you get out of tech school. Okay. All right. So, um, uh, what was the difference between your, um, your basic training instructors and your tech school instructors? Uh, there was a, the, the basic training uh, instructors are a lot more uh, hardcore in a sense where they uh, they break you down and build you back up in the sense of the uh, the way the uh, organization wants you to behave and act. Uh, where the uh, tech instructors were more technical, uh, more of a, a teaching type of uh, positions. Mm -hmm. uh, much more. Uh, I wouldn't use the word relaxed, but less tense, I would say. Would, would you say that, especially w with the Air Force, it was more demanding mentally or physically? I, I would say that after tech school, it was more uh, mentally because you had to reach certain benchmarks uh, in your uh, different blocks of uh, you know, schooling that you had to acquire to be able to, uh, to move on. Okay. So you were at Keesler for a year and a half? That's correct. Okay, and where were you stationed? Which, where was your first duty station? Uh, they shipped me back home here up in uh, Massachusetts. Okay. Uh, and uh, the nice thing about this, it, it was like I had said earlier in the interview, the, Viet the Vietnam War was just winding down. And at that time, they weren't, I was allowed to switch from the regular Air Force into the Air National Guard. Oh, okay. So, so it was a great transition. Uh, timing is and everything, and uh, I, I didn't actually have to uh, go overseas. Uh, oh, okay, see, okay. 
So, so after at the Keesla, you just went directly into the Air National Guard. That's correct. Okay, and how long did you uh, serve served, in the Guard? I served approximately seven years uh, in the Guards, and uh, our basic duty was to go around and uh, at remote sites, setting up um, uh, remote uh, uh, radio tower stations type thing, uh, control tower wiring, uh, the sorts. Okay. Up until this point, had uh, were there any casualties? Anybody get hurt? Did you ever get? Did you get hurt at no, all? No, not uh, not so. I, I was you know relatively uh, you know I uh, I did what I was told, followed orders, and stayed safe. Okay. <laughs> How did you get along with uh, the officers? Speaking of which, <clears throat> you know, well, boot camp teaches you that that you know to be able to take uh, to you know respect uh, rank. Uh, and uh, so it was, a, it was an easy transformation for me. Um, I, I didn't fight the system. I joined and embraced the system. Right. Okay. All right. Um, how, was, how was the food, by the way? How was the food in the military? <laughs> it wasn't like mom's. I can tell you, like I say, I, I, my whole <laughs> adult life up to that point was spent at home. Uh, I had home cooking, uh, you know, three good square meals a day, uh, laundry done for me, and... Uh, Really, not many responsibilities. Okay, okay. Um, did you did you do any traveling while you went to service? Yeah, we did a lot of traveling. We went through all kinds of uh, Air Force bases throughout the uh, throughout the country, setting up these remote sites, really? these uh, these uh, control tower. Uh -huh. uh, that's what our squadron was uh, known for. Where did you go? Uh, we uh, went uh, a couple of bases up there. Uh, it's been a long time now, yeah. as far as it is. But uh, we went to New York. We went to uh, Oklahoma. We were out in California. Uh, and uh, I believe it was either one of the Dakotas. Okay. All right. Wow. All yeah. right. <laughs> what was um, what was the travel like? And what was the well what we, what we would call the economy like when you went to these different places? What were the people like <clears throat> around the country? Respectful. I mean, they were bringing a, a you know a bunch of us in uh, to to be installed, and we. We'd end up mingling with the townspeople or the city people, you know, during uh, off hours and mm -hmm. such. And it was it was great to learn about other, uh, you know, other uh, uh, personalities, you know, different of uh, different parts of the country. So mm -hmm. yeah, it, it was it was an education. Other really cultures, was. so to speak. Oh, yeah, you can even use the word culture. <laughs> right. Sure. Yeah. Uh, speaking of which, um, when you when you got um, R and R, where did you go when you, you know, on vacation, so to speak? Yeah, well, we got the. Did, uh, did you get you? You got thirty days off a year, right? Yeah. Right. Well, well, yeah. Well, we like I said, we we did be a bunch of us that we were relatively young back in those days, mm -hmm. and uh, you know we do the basic things that you know you, all young men do. We we go out to the local uh, taverns or saloons or or you know do some sightseeing and such, uh, mm -hmm. and just mingle in with the uh, with the locals. Okay. All right. So you never saw any combat. No, thank God. And you, and another thank God is you. Ne you were never a prisoner of war. Yep. Okay. Did you get any uh, medals or citations? Uh, just different uh, squadron citations that we got for you know merits that we done good work and and such. Uh, so there was th to name them now at this stage. I I, I actually <laughs> don't remember. It's been a long time. It's been yeah. a number of years. It's been a long time. I understand. Um, even mock or what we called um, uh, alerts. Did, were you involved in any alerts? Did you did you have anything to do with any battle planning? No, and the nice thing, you know, uh, like I said earlier, that the time of my uh, enlistment was it worked out perfect because that's when they ended the uh, Vietnam War. Mm -hmm. So the, the country was just starting to come to terms with itself as far as peace. Uh, the protests were all starting to wind down, mm -hmm. uh, and people were starting to come back to back into the states the, under the GI bills. And stuff, and, and on to colleges, right? But I was just even in peacetime. We we did. Um, I was in the Strategic Air Command. We, you know, we did. Mm -hmm. uh, we still um, participated in alert in alerts. I was just wondering. Yeah, well, then for for the uh, for my uh, job description is uh, you know uh, electronic uh, ground radio repair guys. That they, they didn't really call us out too much. No, okay, well, but yeah. you still have to, you know, 
first communications used to go in and yeah, just maneuvers, during, like on maneuvers. Well, we, well, but you we, were practicing that anyway oh, when you were out in the yeah, field. Yeah, definitely maneuvers okay. uh, during yeah. some severe weather right. uh, issues that we had. Yeah, we were we were set up into some of the communities. Uh, I, I believe there was a, a couple of nor'easters that they, they called out the National Guard right. uh, and the Air National Guard. Uh, and there was a couple of uh, other uh, weather-related uh, incidents. Okay. Okay. All right. Um... Let's see. So, how did you stay in touch with your family while you were in the military? Oh, I wrote a lot of lot of letters. A lot of letters. You know, it's uh, it's funny. Today's world, we're all texting and uh, uh, internet and everything. Back then, they, they didn't have that. You had to you had to sit down and actually write it on. The, we'd go to the PX and get some uh, Air Force uh, headline uh, banner type uh, paper and uh, sit down and actually uh, in our rooms and uh, write letters to our loved ones back home. Okay. Did they write back? Yeah, occasionally <laughs> sent uh, packages uh, to us, uh, you know, with the homemade uh, cookies and, and such, and uh, they were always a welcome sight. Gotcha. Yeah. Did you did you um, you feel like you had all the supplies that you needed? Yeah, the, the uh, you know they, they supplied us well. They supplied us with the basics. Uh, you know, like I say, they they gave us three meals a day, uh, and uh, they're uh, you know very efficient okay. in how they run it. So did you have? Um, did you always have all the supplies that you needed? Yeah, basically, uh, you know, uh, we would go to the uh, VX uh, on weekends and buy the, you know, supplementals, you know, uh, the, you know, toiletries and, and such like that. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, for the basics that we needed, where they gave us a, a, a bunk, a pillow, and a blanket, so. Okay. All right. Um, did you... Um, did they have, a, you know, when you were on active duty mm -hmm. or even, you know, in the Guard, were you still stationed in the same place in the Guard? Where, where were you stationed? Yeah, they had, the Guard had a uh, station up in, uh, uh, at that time it was uh, Worcester, Massachusetts. I think oh. they since moved it down to uh, the Cape Cod area. Okay. Uh, but they had a, uh, they had a branch of it up there. Uh, we were stationed with the, uh, we were the 212, and they also had a uh, squadron of the, uh, uh, 101, I think it was, uh, and they were uh, they were a construction type crew where they put in poles and wires, and we come in behind them and uh, do the technical stuff. Okay, okay, um, okay. Uh, did you keep a diary? <clears throat> no, not so much. You know, just a lot of memories in your in your head uh, mm -hmm. at that time. Uh, you know, diaries, uh, we were busy, always busy, especially on active duty. Uh, they had us, like I say, going from point A to point B. You didn't really have much downtime. Uh -huh. And when you did, uh, you know, you, you spent most of it on base and occasionally when you had R&R &R, uh, going off base. Gotcha. Um, did they ever bring any ent entertainment on the base? Uh, just the basic, uh, you know, the... the uh, lame movies that they would show on the bases <laughs> and stuff like that mm -hmm. uh that uh, if you had nothing better to do uh, that you'd go in and they uh obviously we we spent time in the uh the day room and the rec rooms uh just you know talking to other people uh uh from different parts of the country you know and getting life stories and on weekends uh sometimes on weekends we take uh we take a trip with uh people who were stay uh lived in uh, the uh uh, southern half of, you know, Alabama, Mississippi, so I'd get to go home uh, with some of my mates and uh, spend some time with their family. So oh, that, cool. that was a real education. All right. So yeah. you interacted. Interacted, at, at right. Even. Yeah. Did you maintain any of those relationships after the service? Yeah, I have. That I have. Uh, you know, they uh, they wane after, obviously, a number of years. It's yeah. We're talking the 70s here. But uh, we occasionally, uh, you know, get a letter now. Now with the internet and everything, it makes it a little easier mm -hmm. uh, with some emails uh, and such. Uh, we've never had a big reunion uh, of such, right. but uh, there, there is a handful of individuals that we still reach out and talk to. Sure. Okay. Um, speaking, of, uh, yeah. So, the um, you ever belong to any military organizations after the service, like VFW yeah, or VFW Post and anything? Uh, we go uh, and. Uh, you know, uh, not being a combat veteran, right. uh, it's a little different uh, than somebody who has actually gone through combat. Mm -hmm. uh, so I always respected uh, those individuals that right. did that, and uh, it was always a, a delight to hear some of the some of their stories. Gotcha. Um, so where were you? How long did you stay in the guard? 
Uh, approximately uh, about seven years, okay. a little over seven years. So total, how many years military? Ten? Yeah, just okay. a, about well seven and done. Okay. All right. Um, so where were you when you when you separated? Uh, when I got separated, uh, I was uh, where was I? God. Were you still in Massachusetts? Uh, yes. I just come back to Massachusetts, and then uh, they uh, they gave me my orders that uh, you know I could uh, I could uh, separate separate. That's, yeah, that's the word. That's the word. There's no better word to use it than separate. <laughs> You're absolutely right. There you go. Not to separate. There you go. So, um, what did you do? What was your mindset as the closer you got to separating? <clears throat> Well, you, you know, I, I enjoyed the structured, like I said, the the, the uh, structured uh, life of military. I really did. Uh -huh. it, it, uh, you know, it took a lot of the guesswork out of it. You, you knew you had to do this, mm -hmm. this, this. And it was, uh, so when I, as I was starting to wind my uh, military career down, uh, the opportunity came up to join uh, the fire department. Uh -huh. So any type of... Uh, Public safety, like that, police, fire departments, this semi military right. and statue, you know, through ranks and such. Uh, so it was a natural fit for me. So mm -hmm. uh, we, uh, we were lucky enough to get on to, uh, into the fire department. Yeah, that's what I want to ask you about is um, how long were you in the fire department? Where was that? Where was it? Yeah, I ended up being stationed uh, in Massachusetts, uh -huh. uh, Worcester Fire Department, right. and I was there for about uh, thirty plus years. Yeah, I see your um, I see your axe back there. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. uh, obviously, uh, being a, as a state representative now, uh, when we make uh, law or policy, uh, public safety is always you know the top of my agenda. Right. Uh, and uh, so anything that uh, that I can do to strength strengthen. The safety of our first responders. Right. Uh, it's just a, a show of appreciation by uh, by that, those, those organizations. Right. I see. It's very nice. Yeah. Thank very you. nice. Okay. Um, did you use your GI Bill at all? And I'm going to ask you some more about being a fireman, but I'm just moving the. Edu did you use it for education or yeah, your house used, or anything? Yeah. I uh, I ended up uh, using uh, some of it to to go on to a community college. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, getting an associate's degree. Okay, and? Uh, I ended up getting in, the, obviously I was just, uh, uh, had been hired by the fire, in fire science. So uh, oh, wow. it helped me tremendously in my career as a firefighter. Right, and where did you go to school? Uh, it was called Quinsigamon Community College. It was a community college in uh, Worcester, Massachusetts. Okay. So uh, it uh, gives me great you know, pleasure to be able to serve our, our community colleges, our state colleges uh -huh. that I'm uh, highly uh, involved with. And, and how many years were you with the fire department? Uh, 30 years. And what did you, what did you do after that? Uh, I, uh, <laughs> I uh, obviously, uh, after I retired from the fire department, uh, my technical tr uh, trade background, I was a, uh, I was an electrician, electrical contractor mm -hmm. and such. And uh, I did that for a number of years long uh, with the uh, fire department uh, and uh, after I retired from the department uh, I continued to do that for a bit and uh, it just uh, the weather up there in the northeast as you as you well know as you get older gets more wearing and taxing on you uh, I had come down to the South Florida area for a number of years and uh, golfing and enjoying the beaches down here uh, so it's just a natural uh, move and fit to uh, to say uh, we packed up and uh, moved here to South Florida. Okay. And who is we? You, you uh, well, I had, uh, on one of those trips here, my many trips down to South Florida, I met my uh, future wife down here on uh, one of the beaches. Oh, okay. Yeah, so uh, it was, uh, she was all for it to, this, you know, to come back here and uh, make it at home. Oh, cool. Yeah. All right. So, <clears throat> um, still there's more to your, um, your, your, work career, what did you do after being a fireman? <clears throat> well, it's an interesting question. I, I've always been, in, in the military taught me this, uh, that, uh, you know, uh, to, to take charge, uh, either a follower or a leader, you know, and it, even uh, to some of the schools that I went to uh, and why I was uh, on active duty, 
uh, and even when I spent time in the in the, uh, in the squadron marching uh, uh, those troops back and forth, I had mentioned earlier the different uh, different braided ropes that you would wear, different positions of power, uh, and I worked myself up into being the the uh, squadron leader mm -hmm. to be able to march the the flights across the flight lines into the schools and back. So that was quite an honor. So when I got out of there and I uh, got into the fire department, uh, it was a natural fit. And, uh, you know, and I continued that. I retired as a lieutenant. But when I got out of there, it was, you know, giving back to the community. So at that point, we, we were down here, and an opportunity to, came up uh, you know, to, be, uh, to run for a public office okay. uh, as a city commissioner in the city of Boynton Beach. Mm -hmm. And um, we, uh, we worked it hard. Uh, I was a versatile and known, unknown down here at the time, obviously uh, coming from Massachusetts. My accent kind of gave me away, but uh, I, uh, we entered the race and uh, we won our first election by uh, three votes. Uh -huh. uh, wow. Yeah, yeah. That was it, close. It was close, like a field goal in football for you football fans out there. Right. <laughs> but uh, it, uh, it served, served me well, serving the people of Boynton Beach for uh, approximately uh, six years. Uh, the opportunity then came up again. You know, life is funny, and you know, it's about being in the right place at the right time. And you know, when those opportunities come along to you, uh, and a opening here at the uh, state level opened up, and uh, once again we we threw our hat into the political ring, uh, and we're fortunate enough to win that election. And uh, now I sit here before you as a state representative. Okay. Wow. Um, I missed the part where you had. Uh, become an officer. You you retired as a, as a lieutenant. That's correct. From the United States Air yeah. Force. Well, I found out very early in the, in my military career that, uh, like I say, uh, you know, there's different ranks as as you're going through tech school and stuff like that. Uh huh. And I found myself to be somebody who enjoyed being a leader instead of a follower. Okay. I enjoyed probably giving orders better than taking orders. <laughs> so it was a natural fit for me to take those tests, every opportunity I could to get myself in positions to, you know, to do that, to be a leader. I'm just curious, what rank were you as an enlisted uh, uh, person uh, when you made the transition over? Uh, from military from, to, pub, to but, private? No, no, no. When you went from, you went in as enlisted right. sergeant, right? You became a buck sergeant, you told me. Right, through the ranks. And how, how far up the That's sergeant's right. ladder did you go? I went to a staff sergeant. Okay, and then you transitioned to a lieutenant. From the fire, the, the lieutenant part was uh, fire department, not not into... Oh, yeah, so gotcha. I, so that could have been a little confusing. Yeah. Okay, so you staff yeah. sergeant and then... Right, you the public service was, a, was as a lieutenant. Gotcha, all right, cool. Good, good job. Yeah. All right. Um, let me just adjust. There we go. All right. So, um, <clears throat> last couple of questions. Uh, and you said you did you use your GI Bill for school? Yeah, we okay. we you, went on it and, and got our uh, degree in fire sciences. Who is we? When you keep saying we, me, well, I, I should I, I did. I, <laughs> I, 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 I guess that's not yeah. That's, that's well, I mean, first. if your wife was with you, it yeah, wasn't. No, it was uh, we. No, I, no, I. <laughs> I, okay. used it, I used it. Very good. All right. Okay. Um, okay. Did you? Okay. So, last couple of questions. Um, how did your? How did your? Um, did your military experience influence you thinking about war or about the military in general? <clears throat> I think it gives you a whole different perspective on the military. Uh, I think anybody who served in the military in any capacity, whether you're in wartime or not, that our troops overseas now are put in harm's way. Uh, I, and a lot of them are, are National Guard units that have been activated to go over there. You're talking about, you know, firemen, policemen, teachers, you know, the everyday citizen who, who is a member of the Guard unit now in harm's way fighting a war. So it's giving a whole different perspective and uh, respect for, uh, for those who are now serving in harm's way. Okay, and how did, how did your service and experiences affect your life? Well, uh, like I say, I, I, I think it's given me a outlook on life is that, uh, you, you know, there's got to be rhyme and reason in life. There's got to be structure in one's life, wherever, wherever that takes you. Uh, and, 
you know, I, I think the service, if anything, has taught me o overall that's respect. How you, that's how you feel. About, okay. All right. Is there anything that you'd like to share that you feel like you may have left out of this interview? No, I, I would just say uh, that, uh, you know, if you're at some crossroads in your life and you're a youngster, uh, somebody coming out of school or college and you don't know really where your career is going to take you or if you have a career uh, or you have gone to a vocational or tech school and you have, a, you have a, an ability to, to do some, uh, something vocational. I, I would encourage you to consider uh, joining one of the branches of service. Uh, I think it's, a, it's, it's probably one of the best educations that you can get uh, and along with the GI bills and the, the opportunities they allow you to go to college from there, I, I would highly recommend uh, people you know, to at least uh, inquire about it. Okay. Well, I'd like to thank you for your service and I'd like to thank you very much for this interview. Well, I thank you very much for having me. Not a problem. <laughs>